Hey everybody, it's After the Gig and I'm Jesse Humphrey. Today on the show, I have the wonderful Will Byington. Will Byington is the guy behind the camera for all the six-man cruises. He's amazing, he's such a wonderful human, and we're not going to waste any more time. Let's talk to Will, enjoy the episode. So I asked my community, I asked the After the Gig community for some questions for you. You create all the memories for all the people on the rock boat, and, and the reason why I've kind of been like on this on the rock boat kick and and talking to people about it a lot is because of the idea of the community around it and you foster a lot of those memories that create that community for the people on the boat which is which is just like the most important job to do so i asked the after the gig community to ask you some questions i have some as well but we'll start with them because they're the the important ones so katie musselman here asked what's your favorite your single most favorite musical moment you've captured on on a camera in one of the cruises or, or ever, let's just say ever. <laughs> See, it's, it's so funny. I, sh- I shouldn't have looked cause I, I, I think I, I spied a couple of these. I know you, you answered I, one of them. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> I, I answered, I jumped in and I was like, Oh, I just, you know, I mean, that's the, so one is that's kind of the way I always look at my gig with six man. Uh, so I started with six man. I did the rock boat two, three, and four with the band cowboy mouth. I was their merch guy. And did merchandise promotions marketing. And I did Rockbo 2, 3, and 4. And I was like, this is heaven. This is the coolest thing anyone could ever do. It's spring break for adults getting on this boat. And back then, Six Man didn't have any rules, didn't have anything. And it was great because when you worked with a band, at that time, I think I worked like three hours on the boat. And, and then basically got drunk and met people and made <laughs> friends and and had in, an incredible time. So I started calling Six Man and... Uh, uh, and the first couple times I called them, they, they were like, no, we've got a guy. And they had this guy that photographed the early boats. And no, we got a guy click. And somehow, someway, in, in uh, the fall of 2006, they called back and they said, hey, are you still interested in photographing the rock boat? We've got it coming up in January 2007. And, and I kind of said, let me, let me check my schedule. Uh, let me see if I'm free to get paid to leave Chicago in January see some of my favorite bands in the world and photograph it. And, uh, yeah. you know, I kind of put the phone down, did a little dance and, uh, and then said, yeah, I think I'm free. And, and then they, and then they said, Hey, well, you know, and this year we're branching out a week later, we're doing the Leonard Skinner cruise. Nice. Uh, are you interested in that too? And I was like, yeah, you're going to pay me for two weeks in Florida in January. Uh, yeah, I think I'm in. And since then, I've done 164 more cruises. Uh, I've done. I've, uh, I think I'm. I think my count right now is at 166 six-man cruises uh, over the years. I just went over this spring two years of my life. Uh, they, they call it salty days. Your your saltiness. Yeah. And and I went over two years. I think I'm at like 750 days at sea. So Wild. this is a really really tough question because so much I, I, I if you figure over 200 or over two years 166 cruises um and and rock boat is definitely one of the top boats i do because of the love i have for the people <clears throat> and the bands and the friendships i've created over 20 rock boats but it, it's so tough i i think i figured out that just on six man cruises i've taken over a million photos uh, and a million memories. So it's, it's, I don't know if I have a, an exact, I don't think there's one moment. I don't think there's one shot that, you know, I can go, Oh, okay. Out of 1.37 million photos, uh, that night on rock boat 12, when, you know, I, I wish I had that moment. Um, but I can also say like when, uh, Gaelic storm had Dave, the blind guy crowd surf. <laughs> that one does stick out. Um, they they had a moment where they they critique this guy standing there. I think his back was to the stage, and he was wearing sunglasses. and And Patrick Murphy started kind of saying, "You know, oh, you're too cool for us and whatnot." And then they realized he was actually blind. Um, and then they had him crowd surf. Uh, I have a photo of that. That that was pretty epic. Um, you know, anytime Michael Franti. Uh, who now does his own boat, Soul Shine. But back when he was on on the rock boat and he also did trains, uh, Sail Across the Sun, 
Franti brings the party, um, you know, and, and always brings an energy and, and runs around the, the pool deck. You, you have to definitely be on your toes because he's going to run through the crowd. He's going to run into the hot tub. He's going to run everywhere he can and make sure that every single person on that pool deck is having an amazing time. And that makes for great photos. Um, you know, uh, Red Wanting Blue always brings it. Uh, there's a little band, uh, I think you've heard of them, called, uh, uh, what is it, Carbon Leaf? <laughs> yes. uh, they always bring bring a fun party. The the show that where y'all were dressed as Ghostbusters, if I remember right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and Barry got slimed on stage, I believe, <laughs> uh, that was pretty epic. They pretty really fun. didn't want us to do that. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why. wonder why. It's weird. Wonder, don't, no, I don't you know. know. <laughs> but, but, you know, most of the things that I hear – uh, our production crew, which works their ass off. The, you know, the production crew is insane. The fact that we keep things on schedule um, for the most part and and they work their insane ass off. The funny thing is most of the time I hear they didn't want something to happen. I'm like, oh, that was a good photo though. That was that was fun. Yeah. You know, that, so, so, you know, most of the times I, I love those moments uh, and they're sitting there cussing me out. Yeah, uh, but the same has thing to, happens. Like, deal with it. <laughs> you know? But the but the same thing happens. You know what what's fun for me is those epic moments on stage that everybody sees. But I also love, and it's one thing I love about my job there with Six Man, is documenting the moment you come off stage. And mm. what's fun is, especially on the pool deck, and especially those those epic jam shows where it's costumes and. Yeah, you know this this past year I think it was was a eighties um eighties hair band, you know, set. And and so everybody on the boat gets into it. So the crowd's into it, they're in costumes, but then the bands are in costume. And what's fun is when when y'all come off stage documenting you know, the beauty of the rock boys, the friendships, not only between the fans, but the bands. Right. And and getting those moments of, of everybody is also when the production crew yells at me because they're trying to get the sets changed out and the gear changed out. And I'm standing there right at the bottom of the ramp, right in their way <laughs> going, Hey, you guys get together. Let's get a group shot of, you know, insert band a and band B here. And, and it's, you know, it's awesome, but that's, what's fun is just capturing those. So I, I don't know if I have, like I said, I don't know if I have one, I will tell you one moment. I did not do the rock boat six, the Rock Boat 6 went from Galveston, and there's a moment that everyone who was there still lives by where, I guess, Wide Awake played in the atrium. And mm. it was rainy, it was bad weather, and any rock boater who was there will tell you that was an epic, just one of the coolest moments they've ever experienced. I wasn't there, so I, I wouldn't know. But I do remember the atrium on some of those early carnival boats. Sister Hazel, for example, played in the atrium. And they did a wow. really cool show in the atrium. And what it was, was it was, you know, it was eight floors, 10 floors of people all around this atrium. And then the band in the middle and people on the floor and they did confetti. They did like an America set. And I do remember that. I have a couple photos from that that are pretty, pretty epic. But uh, I think that was like rock boat 12. Um, but, you know, I, I could go on and on of just moments. But I, like I said, I don't think there's one where I'm like, Oh yeah, that 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 shot I took it and I was done. Right, <clears throat> it's funny. I asked I asked the um the rock boat uh page on on Facebook maybe a maybe a month or two ago about like their favorite stages and and most of them were like the pool deck or whatever. But the atrium stage was like a very close second, and a lot of people love that stage, and I and I do too. Like to play that stage, you know, everybody wants to play the pool deck and 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 the stardust and all that but th there's an energy in the atrium that is much different than everything else you have the big bar there people are constantly walking through there's you know any any place where there's like congestion there's people that want to be there to see what's going on so i think it has a really cool energy in that room and i can't even imagine uh, sister hazel playing in that well, and and the deal that and and again, it's it's kind of old versus new rock boat. When was your first boat? When were you first on the the, the rock boat? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to say like maybe like twenty seventeen or something. My first rock boat okay. was with was with Kellogg, um, and it must have been like 
20, I, probably 2017. I, I so so that's that's cute. That's cute because you're 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 basically a rock boat baby. Uh, you're you're an infant in the in the the annals of of the rock boat. Right. Because so when we talk about the atrium, us old uh, mfers, uh, us old folks who are like back in my day, kid, back in my day, <laughs> the 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 atrium was nothing like it is now. You okay. don't even know what I'm dis- like, and I'm gonna send well, you, you some pictures. You said like multiple floors, like you said seven so, to ten floors or something. And and so here's the funny thing, and and if 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 it came in close second, I guarantee you it was old rock boaters who were like, I miss the atrium. The funny thing about it is, and Red Wanting Blue could tell you because I think their first year on the boat they did an atrium show, and Sister Hazel would probably second this. It was a uh, so we used to do carnival before Norwegian. All the the first ten years of the rock boat, for example, were all on carnival, and and the boats were horrible. At the end of the day, mm. they were horrible. The rooms were horrible. Everything about it was horrible, except for a few certain things. And th- there was a casino stage. It was called the Promenade, and you would walk. It was it was basically all the music venues were on one level. So Stardust and Spinnaker, the equivalent, were on the seventh level, for example. And then you would walk deck seven from end to end. And in the middle was the casino and there was a casino stage. And and back in the day, Zach Brown would play, for example, from midnight till 5 a.m. Wow. on that casino stage. And everybody who walked by, you'd be walking by and, and he'd be like, Jesse, get up here. You know, Barry, get up here. Uh, you know, Pat McGee, get up here. And at 2 a.m. you'd be sitting there and all of a sudden Pat McGee would be jamming with Zach Brown on that casino stage it was crazy but the atrium on that boat was totally different than what you're thinking of Mm -hmm. and it was it was in the middle of the boat and it was the best way i think any of us can describe it who were there back in the day is it was like remember the mall you probably went to as a kid and the mall had that seven story five story atrium and there there would always be elevators in the middle of a mall yeah and and you'd have the the balconies around that open part in the middle of the mall and then the elevator would go up in the middle that's the way the atrium was and it was six six stories let's say and you'd be sitting there and all of a sudden we'd have a band play it and you'd have six stories of people and it was almost like the thunderdome also (laughs) if you think about it because everybody'd be up there and they could throw stuff at you and, and yell and uh but it literally was the Thunderdome and you'd be in the middle of six stories of people all the way up, all the way up to as far as your eye could see. And the funny thing is I've, I've talked to six man Jen about it many times because for years she's heard, Oh, I miss the atrium. I miss the atrium. I miss the atrium. And then everybody goes, yeah, the sound did kind of suck in there. And yeah, the sight lines, unless, you know, if you were on that balcony, it was cool. But if you were two, three people deep on the balcony, you couldn't see anything. Right. And you know, so it's one of those things where the the memory of it is epic and incredible. The reality of it, or like, oh yeah, the atrium now, as you described, is is a lot better. Yeah, but well, if you get if you get <clears throat> in there on that experience, of course you're gonna have a better, you know, a better tale to tell than someone that was like three D back, or you know, you got to get, you know, early bird gets that worm, right. gets that memory. It's you know? funny. I'll I'll try and dig up. I've got a couple photos. I'll try. And, I, you know, I don't know those. if you can drop in photos later. Or yeah, whatnot, but uh, for sure, definitely, oh, okay. definitely. I'm gonna piggyback on that question because, um, it, it it like you said, it's it's so hard to think of a one memory. Like I get asked all the time, "What's your favorite place to play? What's your favorite you know song to play?" It's like, yeah, there's different versions of everything. It's so impossible to think of it that way. But I'm curious, like what like what your morning looks like on one of those cruises, like how you, when you pick up your camera, how you decide where you're going to be. Cause you have to, you have to kind of know after having so much experience doing this, all right, where am I going to get the best shot um, or the best opportunity to capture some really cool stuff? And I imagine the, the scheduling is part of that. Um, But like what, how do you approach it when you pick up your camera in the morning on the boat? Uh, well, first you started with a word uh, that I, I don't totally recognize, and it's why I I, I kind of tried to live my life like a rock star. Uh, morning, what is <laughs> what is what is this word morning that you? Uh, well, you speak I up? mean, uh, when you leave when yeah. you leave your cabin. <laughs> um, good morning. Uh, you know, it's it's 
it's funny. Uh, I so you know an, an average day for me on the boat. You know, and this is one of the parts that I think a lot of people don't understand. They I, every year I get people saying, "Oh my God, you you have the dream job. It's incredible what you do. I want your job." And then I go, you, you know, you're out here drinking from noon till you know two a.m. Uh, having a blast seeing everything. You know, an average day, especially on the rock boat, is is about sixteen hours, sixteen to seventeen hours. Wow! And and so, you know, an average day, I do usually try to sleep till about ten, eleven, uh, because I've been up usually, especially in rock boat, I've been up till three or four. Yeah. Uh, you know, I get back to my room, so I get up. Um, you know, it's it's funny when I started. So I like I said, I did rock boat with cowboy mouth. I called and uh, Todd Elmore and Red were the two people who were like operations at the time and Andy Levine and they, they hired me and I, I had a call with Andy Levine at the time who owned six man, who started six man. And I said, tell me, can give me my job description? Give me a shot list. Let me know what to shoot. And he always just said, Hey, will capture the experience. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I gotta go click. Yo, capture the experience this is a unique thing you know i want people to know that they're in the middle of the caribbean having the time of their lives capture the experience click and so that's what i've always kind of had in the back of my mind is capture the experience and and you compliment me greatly about capturing the memories and and what i really set out to do is do that is find a way to capture the capture the memories and sometimes i even get yelled at by six man for taking too many fan photos, you know, mm-hmm. I, I can't capture too many, but there, but when people are losing their minds, having the vacation of their lifetime, it's, it's, it makes my job easy. When I leave my room, usually cussing because it is still too early, even if it's like 10 AM. <laughs> um, and they've started adding again, those, those bastards again at, uh, those bastards in red wanting blue, for example, they start doing like a run at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. That's crazy. Uh, it's that it's to just, me. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 what, what? Stop that. Stop. We're not supposed to start till noon. What are we um, doing? <laughs> you know, what are we doing? Exactly. There, there's also track jackets that we, we give out for anybody who's been on five cruises. You know, that starts usually at 9 30, 10 a.m. I'm, I'm like, there's, there's a thing, a, a beautiful thing called sleep uh, that, you know, I, I like to do, um, you know, but no, what I, what I try to do, and, and I think it's one reason I've done 166 boats is as you feel the rhythm of a boat and as you feel kind of the, the motion of the way it's going, I kind of, you know, I, I kind of know when the moments are going to be, if that makes sense. And, and sure. I do take pretty good pride in, in knowing where to go, when to be there, mm-hmm it always kills me when I miss something, you know, I, I do. It's funny. I can take, I, on an average day, I take two to 3000 photos on the rock boat every day. And what's funny is I can almost tell you almost like the thing about, I can't pick out moments that like, Oh, that photo is my favorite moment. Yeah. What kills me more. And, and this is the artist in me, I guess I would say, and, and I'm sure you have it and, and other musicians I talk to have it. You can play the best show in the world. Everybody's like, that was the, the, the most killer show we've ever done. And then they sit there and go, yeah, but I missed the chord on song four. <laughs> yeah. I missed the solo or, you know, I messed up the solo on the fourth song, second, you know, whatever. Right, um, right. You know, and when I miss shots, Andrew McMahon, when he's done the boats and he comes out and he, he crowd surfs on a floating unicorn and you know and much as you kind of plan as much as you think okay i'm going to shoot that from the upper deck and then i see a shot somebody got from on the pool deck right up in its face and i'm like oh i wish i could have been in that place um right you know when, when again crowd surf or uh just the some of those moments stick with me the ones i miss more than the ones i actually captured um, but I, I kind of know, I look at the daily schedule, I, you know, I definitely know, you know, okay, if Carbon Leaf's playing the pool deck, that's going to be better than the Atrium even, or Spinnaker. You know, I, 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 more and more I've kind of avoided Spinnaker 
on the boats because it's hard to get an epic rock shot, you know, in the, in Spinnaker. Right. Um, why, why is whereas that? The pool, I think there's just a disconnect in Spinnaker. I think it, it takes a special band in there to really bring the fans close. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of shows and, and, and a lot of it's just the way Spinnaker's booked. It's booked as an overflow room so that they know they can spread people out throughout the boat. But a lot of times the floor might be empty. You know, people are sitting in the comfy chairs around the edges and the floor in front of the stage is empty. Um, Sometimes people do sit on the floor. They're sitting on the the floor, Indian style. Oh, interesting. Kind of sitting. Um, So it's just not really conducive for a rock shot, you know, intimate moment. Um, Whereas, you know, Bar City, you know, is, is you want, I want the shots where the band and the fan are interacting, where there's, energy and excitement and almost like the lead singer can reach out and grab the fan in the front row and be like, can you believe we're doing this? <laughs> um, so, you know, I look for those moments and, and, you know, a lot of it, it it's funny because my, the other old man part of me that, that some people yell at me for is the older, some of the older boats, the schedule was a little freer. And they would, it would kind of allow the boat to breathe a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And, and now I feel like the good news is there's so many incredible bands that there's always something going on. There's always something happening on the rock boat. Um, and what I'm told is the surveys say that fans want that. They want, you know, that, that excitement. As a photographer, there's always something to shoot. But I kind of right. look at it and I kind of say, Okay, I got so and so the other day in Spinnaker, but I'm going to go get them on the pool deck, or I'm going to go get them in Bar City or the Atrium, you know. But it's also trying to just find moments that happen, and it's it's fun, and and the beauty of it is unlike a normal gig where you have just like for bands, unlike a normal gig where you have to pack up and get in your car and drive to find the next moment. <laughs> the beauty of the rock boat is literally you walk out your door. And chances are a moment's happening 30 right. feet from your door. Right. Or you hop in the elevator and then, and then you shoot whatever's going on in the elevator, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah so the fun. elevator parties are some of the best. It's the best. Exactly. Do you have anybody that shoots along with you on the boat? So we back to, back to the, uh, where the schedule has gotten again, because of things like a 9am fun run, mm-hmm. uh, which should never be called a fun run. Uh, because it's 9 a.m. Right. Uh, no, On a God, God bless. <laughs> I love everybody has fun with that. And, and I, I pick on that, but, uh, again, it, it uh, fun and run doesn't uh, work for me. Um, I, th- because the schedule's gotten better, six man has evolved. Also, you know, if, if you look back again, when I started 2007, my space was, uh, I think how we promoted the cruises. Uh, you know, Facebook was just starting, uh, you know, and we kind of did it. Um, so now as it's evolved, as the schedules evolved into a, into a crazy thing, uh, the addition of a second photographer. Yeah. So, so the last couple of years I've had a uh, fantastic photographer, uh, Tammy Vega has helped me, Nathan Zucker, Troy Walsh. Uh, so we've had a couple different ones, uh, that have kind of gotten in and, and usually it's two photographers capturing because, because the schedule's just gotten so crazy. Right. How does it work with multiple photographers and the the style and the aesthetic that you guys try to achieve for the rock boat, either marketing or promotional purposes, whatever they put out, whatever six man puts out there. Is it a cohesive thing? Is there one person editing? Is, is there like you pick <laughs> those people because of, of their style and how it's conducive to what six man puts out? You know, there's a little bit of that. I, I wish there was that big of a game plan and uh, and coordination <laughs> in some ways. Um, to, to a point, there is a little bit of all of that. Uh, there's also a lot of it's just finding, finding people. You know, the, I think the biggest problem I've had over the years is because I've definitely had people think like, oh, I want to shoot the rock boat. I want to be the official photographer. And, and again, and social media is... The good and the good and bad of social media is people only see, oh, you're at you're at ports, there you are hanging out 
in the Bahamas with sure. your favorite bands. Um, they see the, the photos from the casino at 3 a.m. of us all hanging out, you know, and, and socializing. Um, you know, I, I've had a lot of people over the years, again, think that my job is, okay, cool. I go on the boat. I sleep till noon. Uh, I hang out by the pool uh, drinking a, a margarita or a Mai Tai. And then I shoot the headliner. I shoot Sister Hazel at 9 o'clock. And then I'm back in the casino. Uh, and, and like I said, what they don't realize is 17 hours of, of shooting that fun run or the track jacket ceremony or the 15 timers breakfast at 9 a.m. And then having to shoot headphone disco, silent disco at 1 a.m. And then and, and I awesome. started this idea. I started this idea uh, and I regret it almost every day. No, uh, <laughs> when I started, the way I did the boat was. I got paid a very little amount of money. Uh, it's laughable when I got paid the first couple cruises, first couple of years. Um, and at that time, most of it went back to my bar bill. So I basically paid to photograph the early rock boats <laughs> um, because I drank my entire paycheck uh, with friends. And, and, and sadly, uh, to those listening, I don't drink that much. Uh, I got the first couple of boats, I got $500 a boat. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm getting paid $500. I thought it was great. Right. And then my bar bill would be like 380, you know, and I was like, <laughs> awesome. Um, so, but the biggest thing that I've found is people think the, the, what they think it is and what the reality is. And then the bigger thing is, as you know, you've been on enough boats, the, the, the environment changes, you know, you're on the boat, they've got a full pool deck schedule made. And then all of a sudden rain comes and they have to move the bands all over the ship they move them to to the atrium to the casino to the stardust um and so the the biggest thing is finding people who are willing to to work their ass off who are willing to work 15 hour days and and having to we're trying to get better about not having people work 16 17 hour days right. um but it's it's having the flexibility and the ability to literally just roll with the punches and roll with the waves and and be flexible because to work with six man you have to be flexible you have to be ready to to roll with whatever comes your way and and then what i was going to say i started is at the end of the day um because i was paid so little and back then we sold prints of the photos I said, let's put them on the TVs. Let's let's create a thing where we put them on a TV channel. And so as people are waking up each morning, they turn on the TV, they see the fun they missed, you know, or had the, the day before. That's one of my favorite um, parts. That's one of my favorite parts of the rock bows. Like you can see what went on the night before, like on on the actual <laughs> TV in your room when you when you get up. It's like it's rad. You're so you're so immersed in this party in this environment it's rad and 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 that's thank you you know and that's and that's what i wanted with it um with that being said somebody has to do that right, and all right. of a sudden what that means for us is after headphone disco after silent disco uh we go back to the office and often we're sitting in the office and no we don't have a editor you know it, it's each photographer has to pick out their 300, say, best shots of the day, edit them as little or as much as you can, and then create a slideshow. And so a lot of times at 2, 3 a.m., I'm in the office finishing that up so that the guy from the cruise ship can come pick it up at 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., and put it on the TV the next day. And and so that's that's kind of one of the crazy things. Um, and it's a teamwork, you know, we try to get better about creating those selects throughout the day. So you're not doing it all at 2 a.m. Um, now I would sometimes imagine it just gets away from you. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. I, and I, that was going to be one of my questions. Like when do you guys find the time to edit all these photos and, and uh, editing on the boat as opposed to when you get off the boat, like how much editing of photos and which photos are used just exclusively on the boat and which ones are used afterwards and all that. But like there must be, um, since the rooms and the environments are pretty much 
static. Like, you know what it's going to look like in Stardust. You know what it's going to look like on the pool deck. Lighting might be a little bit different, but I'm sure at night it's, it's a little bit more consistent. But I'm sure you're able to use editing presets and things like that to tr- to to make things move a little quicker <laughs> in that environment but also it's like you don't want everything to look the same like really yeah, static yeah. through the whole thing so like so the yeah the fun thing is is the photographers that have been working with me you know the cool thing is if you look at the slideshows hopefully it is con- you know uh very consistent we try to we there is no rules and and I want I want people you know what's fun is after 166 boats, I want people to come on and see the boat differently than I do. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and it's been amazing. You know, a guy, Nathan Zucker, has come on a couple boats and killed it. Um, Troy Walsh, when, when he came on and started helping him, and Tammy Vega, among others. Like, it's fun because what I've always believed about photography, and, and I teach a bunch of photo classes now. I've started doing my shot club photo class. Sure. I did it on the boat some, and I do it, I do it off the boat. Um, what's fun is what I love about photography is, is almost every other art. I don't believe everyone can do. I, I don't think I could take guitar lessons for the next 30 years. I don't know if I'd be a good guitar player. I, I don't, I know I can't sing, you know, um, and I can't really cook. Um, I don't think there's some art like that, that no matter how much you train, how much you practice, you know, again, am I ever going to be a great basketball player? No. Am I ever going to be a great, you know, whatever. Um, I, I think there's some art and skills and talents that just not everyone can do. And part of that fits into playing an instrument and singing and whatnot. I do believe Don't everyone. Don't sell yourself can. short, Will. I'm sure you could be a great basketball player. Uh, are we talking a mini hoop with a Nerf <laughs> basketball? I might be in. Um, but, but, you know, there's. There's uh, and, and trust me, I watched a lot of Michael Jordan growing up, but you know, <laughs> it, it, uh, it, it, it doesn't really work that way. It didn't rub uh, off. It doesn't rub off, you know, being a, a child of the nineties bulls uh, here in Chicago. Oh. Uh, you know, it, uh, I don't believe everybody can do certain arts, but I do believe everyone, everyone can take great photos and maybe you don't do it consistently, but if you take enough, one of the things I teach in my class is shoot away. If you take a thousand photos, you're going to get some great ones. And then with a little editing and with a little cropping and, and whatnot. But what's fun also about photography to me is literally you and I could be standing next to each other and take drastically different photos. Sure. And I love that. And, and, and art is in the eye of the beholder where you could look at mine and go, a third grader could do better. and You could look at yours and go, this is the best shot I've ever taken. And that's Mm -hmm. the beauty of art. That's the beauty of photography. Um, And what I try to teach people is is help them a little bit. And so that's what's fun is seeing the way other people see the boat, seeing the way people capture it. But again, also, like I said, even standing next to each other, you can capture drastically different, unique-looking shots. I will say as as far as presets, uh, this year – Really, in, in the last year, I've started getting more into presets. Uh, they are a beautiful thing. They are an amazing thing. I don't use them as much as I should. I just um, meant, I just meant like, you know, how you would edit your photo. Do you use, do you edit in Lightroom and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, like Lightrooms. Yeah. So the way I the way I do, and you're a professional. I'm a novice, so it's like I go in and like, all right. I know that when I'm sitting in this space here, if I'm going to do like a YouTube thumbnail, I know like the lighting's the same. So I can take the same shot or the same screenshot or whatever, and then copy my settings from the previous yeah. photo and, and paste and whatever. And I don't have to like go through, all right, the light, I got to yeah. bring down the blues. Yeah. I got to whatever <laughs> it, every it's, single it's time, like, you know, I do, I do a little bit. I, I wish I did more. Um, you know, it, probably one of my biggest complaints I have for my own gig is I want to edit more. I love I love making some shots black and white. I love yeah. making I love how how drastically different you can make a shot. A lot of the times, especially on rock boats and and some of the other ones, where I want to be out socializing and seeing friends finally at two a.m. Um, you know, there's there's definitely shots to your point. 
there's definitely, and you asked about what shots are seen on the boat versus the web and, and edited after and all that. The, there's, I try to do everything in the moment from the standpoint of one is there's now, because social media is where it's at, you know, each morning, somebody from our marketing team might come to my computer and grab shots that all of a sudden go out on Facebook or Instagram. Um, sure. So I do want them to look as best as possible. Um, and that's why I end up spending more time at 2 a.m. than I should usually. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's also a part of it that I always want to edit more. I want, I want to make everybody look good. You know, I, we've all... Yeah. We've all had fans tag us in photos uh, where you go, did, did you think that was good? It's like, why did you did post you, that? Why, like, I'm eating a hot dog <laughs> over Jesse's shoulder and you tagged me in it. Um, and, and I know everybody means the best. I really, I know they mean the best. I know they they don't think anything of it. They're like, oh, you're in a photo and it's so cool to see you. Um but I really, I do try. It pains me when I hear from people. Every now and then I'll hear from people like, oh, I can't believe you put that picture on TV or you put that on the website. And I go, oh, and it kills me. <laughs> it kills me when I hear people don't like what we've created and what we've done. What we've done. Um, you know, the other bummer though, and, and, and this goes out to a lot of people who might be watching this, every now and then, you know, if I take two to 3,000 photos at 2 a.m., as I'm finally having a drink, perhaps, uh, I'm going through editing and I'm pulling selects. Sometimes I miss photos. I miss a shot of people. And, and it always cracks me up because, you know, a lot of times I will hear from people like, hey, you know, I didn't see the photo from the pool deck, you know, back by the bar when you captured us, yeah. you know, whatever. And, and, and I'll go look for it. And I'm like, oh, there it is. Um, you know, and, and right in the so middle I, of I do, the... Uh... The 3,200 photos you took. Yeah, yeah. And, and I do apologize. You know, I, I hate when I miss that. And I, and I know, you know, someday a dream of mine is to go back through the the 17 years of, of cruise photos. Um, because I know there's gold that, that would be fun to share and is still sitting out there that maybe never got seen. Yeah. yeah. So this is a, maybe a little bit of a technical question and you, you know, feel free to ex expound on it if, or not. Um, but when you're, when you're shooting, um, it, are you using a particular type of, is there a particular type of lens or, or focal point that you're trying to achieve when you go out and, uh, take these shots, maybe as opposed to something that you would use differently than on the street, like, you know, rather than like a 50 millimeter, do you need to have something with, with a little bit more, um, diversity on the boat or is there a particular thing that you like to stick with? Uh, good question. Good question. You know, I, I do try to, I would say on the boat, I definitely try to go wide more than I go zoom. Sure. Um, part of that sticks back to again, day one, Andy Levine always saying capture the experience, you know, a close up shot of a singer as epic as it may be, could be anywhere. You know, and, and so, for example, if it is in the Stardust, a, a zoomed in shot of a performer on stage in Stardust could be any theater USA and, mm -hmm. and could be anywhere. Um, sure. So I, I definitely try to shoot. I definitely shoot wider than probably some people and, and most because I, I do try to capture the experience of what I always kind of want to show is the experience of the band and the fan. Uh, I lo like I said, I love, I try to capture, I love capturing that emotion, that excitement. And a lot of times on the boats, it's an excitement and a joy that the band you can tell is having. They're like, this is the most amazing gig we've done in a while. And the fans. And I love capturing both, both smiles. Um, I, so I definitely do, I, you know, a lot of times on my I'll carry two cameras a lot of times on the boat um, because I do have one that is a zoom camera. Um, you know, I do, for example, you know, if I'm on the pool deck, I need a zoom, you know, one, because there is still cool zoom type shots. I love, I probably do it too much. I love getting the reflection in sunglasses. Oh yeah. Of whether it's a keyboard or, a, or the fans or the boat. Um, I love reflections. Um, 
but also because people have gotten to know me over the years, and, and that's one thing I also really try to nurture and, and one thing I try to do, I'll post in the Facebook groups before the cruise saying, hey, I'm Will, the, the cruise photographer. If you see me, yell for me. Um, sometimes that's backfired because I'll be running to try and capture a moment like we were talking earlier. I know that something epic is about to happen and, and all of a sudden I'm running through the casino and people are stopping me and I'm like, <laughs> okay, uh, let me try to get, okay, snap. Okay, gotta go. And, and I've heard people be like, that guy's such a jerk. Like he said, stop him. And then he, and then he ran away. Um, and I apologize again, if I do that to you, it's because I know I've got to be somewhere. And it doesn't work too great when you show up and you're like, oh, there, there goes Andrew McMahon getting out of the inflatable uh, unicorn. Cool. <laughs> cool. Um, great. But, uh, but you know, I so, so I will carry a zoom lens uh, because also, again, like on the pool deck, all of a sudden I'll see somebody way on the upper deck waving, being like, take our picture. Uh, but I, I do like my wide angle. I'll, I'll leave like a 16 to 35 kind of on my on my main camera. So it's wider. Um, the way I, I teach in my class also a lot of times, I always kind of say shoot wider because you can crop in. Mm -hmm. Now pretty much everything we use has enough megapixels that you can always crop in. But if you shoot tight, you know, if you're if you're zoomed right in on, you know, on you, you can never expand it. But if you shoot wide, you can always crop in. Um, right. So I kind of do that. Uh, but throughout the boats, I use I use I, I shoot Sony now, so I shoot a, a Sony A seven R four. I've got a Sony A six thousand six hundred. I've started a great photographer, Troy Conrad's, came on the uh, Burt Kreischer cruise, and and I I kind of made I kind of laughed at first because he was shooting a lot of stuff with a fisheye. And Interesting. getting right up in and stuff. And and I was even on the boat. And I think I said to even Charty, I was like, I, I, I don't know how this guy's stuff's going to look. Uh, because he's doing a lot with the fisheye. And then I saw his amazing, incredible work. And the shots he captured of Burt Kreischer and some of the others. And I was like, all right, I'm bringing my fisheye next time. <laughs> that and, works. you know, and uh, it, it was just, it, he did incredible work. And, and. You know, a lot of times now, um, because I'm doing these photo classes also, and some of the photo classes I've been doing have uh, are just iPhone and Android based. So I will shoot. I will shoot probably fifteen percent, twenty percent on the boats, even with my with my iPhone. Even mm -hmm. uh, what I love <clears throat> is is with the iPhone and Android. You know, they've got the wide angle, so you can almost do a fisheye look. You know, very wide angle. Uh, you can also zoom. You can you can do some really fun stuff, and the technology is getting there. Where I think in five to ten years, you probably could shoot an entire boat with just a phone. Oh sure, and it's going to be crazy. It's going to be yeah. crazy. Yeah. Um, so now you brought up the um, your shot club, the class a couple of times. So uh, Crystal Grant from the six, uh, not six man, but the. Um, <clears throat> The Rock Boat group on Facebook asks if you'll be offering lessons anytime again soon. Sangeeta Ryan asks about uh, the Shot Club. She's a 100% satisfied student, completely recommends it. Um, how big is that for you? Are, are you doing it? Or are you going to do it again? So, yeah. So, it's, uh, you know, if, if I was to say, kind of like I just said, in, in the next five years, I think people will be shooting, you know, professional photographers will be shooting just with phones. Um, I'm definitely doing more, definitely doing more classes. Uh, I'm going to be adding some uh, probably in the next day or two so that when this airs or when you share this, uh, there'll be some options. Um, the, it's it's www.shotclubphotoclass.com is a website I set up. Uh, if I was to say the next five years, it's probably going to be my biggest part of my career. We'll be doing more of these classes. It, it's I started it, I, I avoided it for years. And this travel agent group, uh, the old Apple Vacations, now they're ALGV, uh, ALGV Vacations, uh, Apple Leisure Group Vacations. Um, they they kind of came to me and said, we'd love for you to teach our travel agents how to take better photos. Oh, wow. And, and I, I put it off for years. I was an idiot. I, I said, I, I'm not ready to teach. I don't know what I would teach. 
and then I've started doing it and it's, it's been incredible. Uh, I, I travel, I could honestly say now because they had me go to Greece last year and I've done the Caribbean and Mexico a bunch. So I can honestly say I've traveled the world, uh, teaching these photo classes. Um, I did a version of my shot club on, on the rock boat. I did it on about six different six man cruises. I don't know if that's going to come back like it was. It was an incredible opportunity and it was an incredible experience. Everybody who did it had a blast. Um, but some of the logistics of doing a class while I was also doing my full-time job. Oh my God. And <laughs> Can't even imagine doing, that. So doing that and trying to teach and get them their money's worth. And then the logistics of the boat where one part of the class was you actually got to shoot from the photo pit. So you got to be up in front of the stage shooting three songs that's rad on the on the boat and it was incredible and they loved it and what a great was, opportunity then, so we did three things you got you got class with will byington you got uh that was the low part of the the experience then you got to shoot <laughs> the uh you got to shoot from the pit for pretty much everything on the pool deck and then you got we set it up and i i would set it up by recruiting friends uh bands you got probably three to five portrait sessions with bands and you got to do kind of marketing promo type photos with various bands around the ship. Uh, so it was an incredible thing. The thing I've learned and I've, I've got to figure out if I ever bring it back for the, one of the biggest problems is the photo pit. And that mm. was such a cool experience as you just reacted, that it's such a cool thing. I would do that class cool. on the boat for other bands. If, if that was something to do. Cause I mean, I shoot, and, I shoot on a Sony 6,400 and I love it. And that sounds like the best time for me. Yeah. I love that. Well, and so, and so that's the problem. The problem is, you know, in an arena, the photo pit could fit everybody. Sure. The photo sure. pit, the photo pit on the rock boat is about a foot and a half deep. <laughs> um, and all of a sudden you have our video crew who takes the biggest priority they right. need to be able to move and be able to be in there. Our video crew, me, maybe another photographer from Six Man. So all of a sudden there's four people already in there. And then my jackass self brought in six to eight other photographers uh, to be in there. And then there's guys like you from other bands that kind of get up in there. Sometimes the band has a photographer. You know, So all of a sudden you're talking 10, 12 people crowding into this little photo pit. Little party, um, and then the and it was a party, and it was fun, and we made it work. the The bigger problem is there's a there's a three song rule in rock and roll, and for most venues, most bands, most most things, the photographers can only shoot the first three songs of a set from the front of the pit. And I have I could go on a long soapbox. Uh, uh, rant and rave about where I where I understand the three song rule and where I hate it, mm -hmm. um, you know, because I would argue some of the best rock shots don't happen till encore, you know, or, or late in the set when you're sweaty and and all that, and and, and that's why the three song rule is there. Is some artists, if they've been performing for forty years, don't want to be seen sweaty. They can, they come out, they look great in the first three songs. But the part of the three song rule that I do love and, and support is when you're talking a venue in Chicago or a venue in Virginia or a venue in anywhere USA, if you have the band fans, the fans who've waited in line, they've waited outside the venue, they've waited in line, maybe even camped overnight, but those true fans, you know, and, and I almost think of almost famous, you know, the the true fans who are just, they're all about the music and they're all of a sudden in that front row. And then a six foot two photographer comes and stands in front of them. It kind <laughs> yeah. of ruins the experience. Yeah. And like, what the hell? I've been in a lot of photo pits where, where, you know, the photographer for the, the local newspaper is just there doing his job. He doesn't care about the fan. He doesn't care about the band. He's just there to get that photo. And, and if, if you're a huge fan and all of a sudden you have a, a massive photographer blocking you, I get it. Get, get out of there. Get out of the pit for three songs. Mm -hmm. And so that's where it kind of got to be a thing with the shot club on the boat also is 
you know, if you're in that front row and all of a sudden 12 photographers are blocking you, um, it, it, it didn't work out great. So I'm, I'm reevaluating that. Uh, but as far as shot club photo class.com, uh, I will be doing more and I will be, uh, I do some via zoom. I'm going to do some in person and I'm really kind of working on figuring out some in-person type things where we would get a band even and kind of do an afternoon where you kind of maybe do the class and then you still get to do the portraits with the band and, and whatnot. So, uh, yes, awesome. there are definitely more shotclubphotoclass.com coming soon. Badass. Um, so Christy Johnson Corbell uh, asked a similar question earlier that you had already answered, but I wanted to make sure she was included. Uh, she asked, what a standout moment from an artist you have met and, for, um, and photographed that comes to mind that has inspired you in some way? And you, and you pretty much touched on that earlier as far as, you know, so many moments, so many people, the Michael Fronte, all, all those fantastic examples you offered. So uh, that's a great question. Thank you, Christy. Um, so Crystal asked that past one. Sangita asked yeah. the other one. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, <laughs> Sangita also asked um, if it bugs you when the boaters are mugging you to take their photos. But I believe you already kind of touched on <laughs> that where you need to be somewhere and they kind of grab you and, you know, all that stuff. I think you, that's you, a fantastic you know story. You know, it's funny. I'll, I'll say, I'll jump back to two things I'll say is I'll jump back to the experience that I didn't even cover is outside the boats. I mean, so one is I've told this story many times, but I took the worst family vacation a human could ever take. Uh, and that's a slight exaggeration, but not much. In 2001, before I ever did the boat, my family took a cruise from England to New York City on the QE2. And it was six days crossing the Atlantic. We're from the South. We're not that smart. We did it in December, so you couldn't even go outside because it was it was freezing cold. So no pool time, no port days. And it was basically a Sounds new like reality a show for Fox. It was a new reality show, horror show for Fox call that would cross the Golden Girls with a perfect storm. The <laughs> average age was 72, and the average size of the waves were 40-foot swells. Oh so for, for four of the six days, the boat's going like this and side to side. For 24 hours, up, it was hell. It was hell, and I was like, "I'm never doing another cruise." And now I've done 166 of them. Um, but but if you were to, to to all the people asking about experiences, one is if you had told me, "Will you're going to end up photographing hundreds of your favorite bands?" And and the beauty of Six Man, whether it's the Rock Boat, which is what I listen to, you know, everybody always asks me what my favorites are. Everything on the rock boat is what's on my my iPod, you know, in, in my iTunes. Sure. It, it is, you know, and, and if you had told me you're going to get to know Carbon Leaf and Gaelic Storm and Sister Hazel and Better Than Ezra and on and on and on. And, and that list is deep. Zach Brown and, and Brandy Carlisle. If you had told me I was going to get that experience. I would have said, you're crazy. I took one class senior year of college for photography <laughs> and it opened a door to be able to photograph and not just photograph, but become friends with amazing musicians. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And the beauty of it is we're all the same. We are all the same, but everybody's got really good stories. And that's what's really fun is getting to know and be friends with the <coughs> excuse me i get choked up <coughs> hold on i'm gonna i'm gonna mute for one second yeah don't worry <clears throat> all right crop crop that out no oh, yeah. that out. No. <laughs> that um, won't see the light of day no uh no but but you know the, the the experience of that and outside of the boats the fact that i've been able to travel the world I went to Greece twice last year. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. I went and did Joe Bonamassa's blues cruise out of there. And then the travel agency company had me teach photo classes in Greece. Um, but also for 12 years, I've been lucky enough and blessed to be the photographer for, photographer for the Murray Brothers Caddyshack golf outing with, with Bill Murray and, and his brothers. It's the um, best. That sounds like it's an crazy. absolute dream. It's, 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 it's insane. It's crazy. And they're the nicest guys in the world. They're they're totally down to earth, and it's just fun. And 
and that's what I kind of strive is is finding the fun, finding the, you know, finding fun and then documenting the fun, and and that's been an incredible, incredible experience, and and that's what makes it really cool, and and so that leads into I guess the next part of the question of does it bother me? What bothers me? What I do hate is I've had people over the years, over 166 boats, over eight years with Leonard Skinner, over 10 years with Kid Rock, uh, 11 Kiss Cruises, um, 20 Rock Boats, is I do have people almost every year on the Rock Boat who kind of corner me and say, you know, we've been on seven Rock Boats and you've never taken our photo. And, and, and I know some of them are joking and some of them are, you know, kind of saying it like, Hey, we want a photo. You've never gotten us. But there are some people who take it personally, who, who think that, who think that I'm selecting and choosing who I photograph. Uh, and, and, you know, they think I kind of go, okay, I'll take your photo, but I'm not going to take yours. And, and that is, you're not very photogenic. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You know, and that is the farthest from the truth. Um, That's what bothers me. You know, what, what, what bums me out is that people think that's the way. Um, And part of it might be a case where I was running to get a a special toast or a special birthday song or, uh, you know, I, I start out almost every rock boat at the back of great outdoors uh, photographing the, the, the DMV group, the, the group of rock boaters all from the DC area. Mm-hmm. There's, there's about 50 of them. I feel like sometimes it feels like there's 500 of them, That's uh, a lot. Yeah. but, but the DC group is such a strong community. Um, and literally for the last, I don't even know how many years they've written me and said, Hey, we're all going to gather at the back of great outdoors at two forty-five on, on the first day. Can you come take a photo? And I love, love, love doing that photo. Um, But we have to fit it in before the safety drill and before I have to get up to the pool deck for the robe ceremony and and about 18 other things. Um, And, and, you know, so I'll be running to get that knowing that I've got a very brief window to get it. You know, and I might run by somebody and say, oh, I'll get your picture later. And, and, And that's the part that I don't mind it. I will say, you know, it's funny also, there's some people who've now known me over 20 rock boats that every single time I see them, they're like, hey, take our photo. Uh, And that's cool, you know, but it's funny because then they'll all of a sudden end up being 72 photos of them (laughs) and no photos of these other people. But uh, I don't mind it. You know, like I said, my, my job, my career that I've really tried to craft is capturing fun, is capturing and creating fun and documenting fun documenting the way you started the conversation documenting memories documenting you know special moments um and so no i i love when people yell for me i love when people stop me and again a lot of my best friends in this world now are people i've met through these boats uh and and that's a unique fun really cool opportunity that not a lot of people are given that's fantastic. So I'll leave you with this last question here. So Brady gets um, asked, uh, do you have any interest or desire in writing a book that would one day look back on all of your adventures through your camera lens? I s- swapped that uh, question around just a touch, but um, do you, is, you know, speaking of stories and how people have such great stories, do you ever think about writing a book and, um, you know, or putting in photos or a photo book, whatever, of your experiences? Because it's pretty unique. So, you you know, so, and Brady's a, a fun one uh, that I've known Brady. I met him when I was with Cowboy Mouth and, and when I toured, uh, like I said, I did three years touring the country with them, uh, which was a absolute circus and, uh, <laughs> and fun, fun adventure, uh, hitting almost every corner of the United States with, uh, with a little band. Uh, the name of the band is, uh, you know, uh, touring with them was fun. Um, you know, yes, I guess I do think about it as a working photographer and as somebody who wants to who wants to keep getting gigs. Um, that book might still be a couple decades down the road, uh, and I don't have anything. You know, one is 
unfortunately I don't have the stories of some of the guys who photographed bands in the eighties and, and nineties. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't there photographing guns and roses and Motley Crue. And, you know, one of my favorite books is Motley Crue, the dirt, uh, oh, yeah. a fantastic book. Unbelievable. Uh, I haven't experienced that side of rock and roll, um, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, that would sell, um, I love, love, love all the bands I do know, but a lot of us are pretty boring now uh, <laughs> at the end of the day. Uh, and then the second part of that, though, is I have absolutely no desire to be paparazzi, for example. Uh, I never want to sell out any of my friends or, you know, celebrities that I've worked with um, because, again, one, I want to be friends and two, I want to keep getting the jobs. Um, so I've thought about kind of putting something together with this photo class idea that I'm doing, you know, there may be something there down the road. Um, but you know, think about your craziest night on the rock boat, you know, and even the craziest nights, you know, I don't know if it's book material, if that makes sense. When you really think of the true, history historical stories from rock and roll right you know unfortunately unfortunately you know a lot of the stories i mean it's fun and a I cabin love my party life. i know what you're saying so a cabin yeah. party isn't as enthralling as the the ritz carlton after madison square garden is that what you're saying I'm just saying, you know, the the stories that I think of when I think of true rock and roll legends, it's it's uh, Led Zeppelin riding a motorcycle through the Riot House Hyatt or whatever on Sunset <laughs> Boulevard, uh, you know, on the seventh floor or something like that, riding a Harley down the hallway. I think about TVs going out of windows, uh, sure. you know, and stuff like that. And uh, again, I'm not encouraging any of that because, uh, you know, <laughs> we don't oh, need to get you. Off. wink wink we're gonna yeah, yeah. probably leave a cost some ruckus for you get some good shots um, but but you know it's uh you know i think rock and roll in some ways we miss that heyday of of rock and roll from that standpoint of you know things getting broken and, and trashed and being there and, and there was a uniqueness that again it's kind of why i'm even evolving into the photo class ideas even when I started, I, you know, I've been a professional photographer this year for 20 years. 20 years ago, there was only one professional camera in the room, mm -hmm. you know, or two. <clears throat> now, because of the technology, as we discussed, everybody's got a camera. And so that uniqueness of, of capturing those stories and moments is not there like it used to be, I don't think. You know, it used to be you were the only guy in the room documenting it, and now everybody's there. Sure. And and you know, again, I'm not trading it, um, but it's also, you know, when well, like when I'm backstage and I do get those shots of friends, a lot of times, as much as I may want to sit there and listen to the stories, even I move on. You know, I kind of respect my my place in the room, being a fly on the wall, to document it and then move on, and. You know, as much as, you know, I'm ready for a band to take me on tour and on the private jet, that would be awesome. Uh, you know, I'm not there yet, but uh, but my phone number is 312. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, so it's, you know, there, there may be some story, some book, something, but, you know, I also feel like almost every story I would tell, I probably told in the last hour on here and, and now why you got to buy the book, you just heard it on, on on the after the gig uh, podcast. There you go. Well, dude, thanks so much, man. It's been such a pleasure. The after the, or the rock boat community is so lucky to have you. I really look forward to having another pina colada with you somewhere on a beach somewhere. And, um, yeah, man. And after the gig community now, now you're a part of it. So thank you very much. I love for, it. Well, for doing thanks this. for having me. Yeah. You're the best dude. dude. All right. Can't wait to see you soon. See you, man.